All right, we're going to get it started. Welcome to Mod City Live, Voltage Control Lab. VoltageControlLab.com, at Voltage Control Lab, all that jazz, at V Control Lab on Twitter. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's been a crazy week. It's been an unprecedented and historic week. Uh, so I figured we can't just do a basic show. We need to speak to what's happening and try to help in the best way that we can in a way that maybe is connected to what it is that we do. All right, the things that we're interested in, the things that we're focused on, uh, how can we how can we better this situation for uh, underserved, underprivileged people? So we're going to try to do a fundraiser here. Now, I can't do a proper straight donation. Uh, I would encourage you to go to afrorack.org, excuse me, afrorack.org, and make a personal direct donation yourself. Uh, there's no reason that we have to do this through Super Chat. If you want to donate through the Super Chat, great. You can do it at the bottom of the chat there. There should be a little dollar sign. All the money that I raised through that today, and uh, we'll see, you know, maybe we'll do this again in uh, the near future. We'll see how well this does. I think maybe direct donations is a better way to go, but uh, we're trying to bring some awareness. So whatever we make in the Super Chat, we're going to try to donate that over not going to try. We're going to donate that directly and completely to Afro Rack. Um, uh, I believe Aaron was at the SoCal Synth Society show in January. It was kind of a, a blur uh, happening around NAM and happening around when kind of the word of the coronavirus was starting to get around a little bit. Um, certainly no... Uh, no shutdowns at that point, but the the rumor was spreading. And uh, so, unfortunately, I didn't meet Aaron, as if I recall, but uh, maybe very briefly, uh, I think maybe Shonda might have, uh, Traversi might have introduced us. But I think what he's doing is really incredible. He's trying to bring the modular synth and music tech world to uh, African-American youth, uh, who are historically underserved in the music community and uh, especially uh, through school programs and things like this being shut down in uh, recent years, getting access to even traditional musical instruments is very difficult. And these tools, as we know, are expensive and hard to obtain for anyone. And... He's doing uh, an incredible job to bring together a lot of different companies uh, uh, and the synth world in general to bring these tools to people who might otherwise not be able to access them. And so we're trying to support this. Please, if you want to, you can do this through the Super Chat, but I would just encourage you to go directly to afrorack.org again and make your contributions there. And... Um, yeah, let's uh, see if we can make some positive change. And uh, I would just also encourage you all to keep your eyes open, be aware of what's happening out there in the world, and contribute in whatever ways you can for positive change. And yeah, that said, we're still doing a normal show today, in a sense. Uh, I will continue to bring up the... Afro Rack uh, uh, organization throughout the show, just as a reminder. But uh, today, I, at the last, very last minute, caught up to the postman who had knocked on my door and I missed the door. I, I missed his knock and uh, he delivered something that I've been waiting for, which was the Synthworks MG1. And if you're unaware, Synthworks is. Uh, long-standing Eurorack company. Um, I don't know James, the, the, the owner, personally, beyond our interaction, uh, maybe randomly 
on Muff Wiggler or, or, you know, the Facebook groups and now through our uh, interaction via email. But he's got a pretty great sale going on right now. 25 bucks, I believe it is, for these MG1s. Uh, and we'll see those in just a minute. I'm going to take them out of the box. We're going to see what's the deal with these things. He has another deal now going on with a, a, a fader controller that he builds. These are modules. They're CV-based modules. And uh, they each do some sort of control, hand-based physical modulation uh, uh, functionality. This one is an arcade button. So we're going to open up the box. These are on sale right now because uh, I think maybe, oh, I, well, I, I'm speculating here, but he's selling them without boxes, without some of the, the frills of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, you know, a retail store uh, in terms of the product that you take home, right? Thank you, Quantum Space, for sending in donation to Afro Rack. Uh, so basically, we get a discount on these modules, but we uh, maybe don't get the glitz and glamour of a cardboard box, right? So let's take a look at what that means. I ordered four. And so here we go. Here's the box. Really simple ordering process. You just email them directly, Synthworks. You can go to their website, which I think is synthworks.com. Uh, works with an E. So you remember, you can see the name in our title if you need a spelling lesson. Um, okay. Let's open this thing up. All right. I got a dangerous tool in my hand. I'm going to slice this open. I'm going to endanger my life in the process. Okay. Box open. Ugh. All right. And we have, I wasn't even expecting this, some documentation. Okay, it looks like maybe these won't fit where I expected to put them, but that's all right. So here's a page telling us exactly what we're looking at here. We'll look at this in a minute. I think we'll be able to figure out uh, just from the panel exactly what's going on here. Okay, and then in here we have this. No box, but that's what we expected. And if I unwrap this... Here's the module. Ah, nice click to it, too. ASMR. So I suppose you could even, like, put this next to your microphone and record it or put a uh, directly onto the back of this place a uh, contact microphone or something like that and even use this as another um, uh, uh, you know f get another trigger or signal out of that yeah deep module HR has noticed this is uh, maybe going to slightly uh, uh, throw off my plan of putting it into my mobile case over here <laughs> That's okay, though. Um, I was only going to put it there for our demonstration purposes, and that's going to be changeable. Okay, let's switch over there, and let's see. Oof, that camera looks yellow. All right, we're going to deal with that for a moment. But, okay, I got a few of these. 25 bucks a piece, can't be beat. And, again, go check out their, uh, their other sale. I think he said he's going to do another one each month. And then they're all going to be on sale for the rest of the year. But I wouldn't sleep on it. Who knows how long this will go, you know, in terms of how much, um, how many they'll make in total. Who knows? Okay, so um, let's bring this over here. 
And uh, let's maybe even before we take anything out here, let's just kind of hold this up next to the case here. Wow, it might be like just shallow enough to get in there. Okay, so. Um, this isn't a sacrifice I would make, but we're going to take the um, maybe the ornament and crime out of here. I guess we have a few spots, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got our power cable coming off. If we look at the panel really quick, up close, basically we've got a arcade style push button. Um, we can send in a signal up to 12 volts. And when we connect the, the button, when we push it down, it's going to send that signal to this output. Otherwise, it's going to send it to this output. Not pushed, pushed, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then at the top, we've got a, a malt using up some of the space, right? So let's see what, uh, what we can do here. Maybe we'll take out... Okay, we're going to take out the quad LFO for a moment. Okay, here's the test. We'll see if this actually fits. Um, okay, here's another limitation, I suppose. Uh, the cable, the power cable, is kind of permanently <laughs> mounted on there. Okay, that's, I suppose, a small problem, potentially. But we can work around that. We'll just take out the power cable that's in there. I would have loved to have just left it in there, but. Okay. That one's out. And then as we put this in, this is one of the things that um, maybe is nice about being able to have an independent power cable is we don't, we maybe don't want to have to replace a cable that's deeply uh, uh, embedded on a power supply deep in our case. And maybe we don't want to do that with the module connected either way, right? On a, on a, even on a good day, we might want to take the module out, leave the power cable in there so that we're not holding onto this thing while like, you know, with another hand trying to undo the power and end up maybe causing some sort of unexpected, unintended damage. But um, this is, hey, it's 25 bucks, whatever. We're going to take this, we're going to plug it in. Am I going the right way? I think so. Okay, no key on that power header. That's another weird thing. Okay, we're going to... Push that on down there in there. Let's see. See, it's kind of cramped in there. I'd love to just not have this cable connected to a module on the other end. There it goes. Okay, I suppose I, now I should have done this part before I even <laughs> connected it, but let's see if it actually fits down in there. So close. Now we might be able to kind of tweak this, might be able to like bend this up, kind of uh, connect that. Uh, this is though maybe not going to fit here. It's just like five millimeters too, too high. You know what though? It might still work. In fact, for the time being, I might be able to use some longer bolts just for... Uh, make sure, HR, if you're trying to go to the SynthWorks website to put an E in works. No O for works. Just E.
Now, sometimes we'll get a module like this and we'll say, okay, no, I need this in my case and it won't fit in my case, but I need it. How can I get it to work? Yeah, that's not going to, not even going to reach. Okay, we'll do it like that, I suppose, for now. We might get uh, some spacers. We might get, you know, I often use these nylon washers. Give me a minute, I'll look up their website and send it to you. Um, I use these nylon washers along with my, with my screws. I don't know if that's gonna, doesn't seem to wanna zoom. No, it's trying. Anyway, there's a nylon washer on there. We could get a much deeper washer and a longer screw and have this uh, basically use standoffs. They call them standoffs. It just keeps the panel stationary, you know, however, whatever the distance from the panel, the module needs to be. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people use those. Okay, so here we go. This is the this is the hassle of having the module connected when you're trying to get the power out. I got it. I got it, guys. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, change of plan. We're going to put this over here in this other case. And bring the mic with me. Let's move over the cat scratching post. Let's bring the camera if possible along with us. I think this is going to work. Just a reminder that we're doing a fundraiser today or really raising awareness of Afrorack. So please, if you have a moment, if you've just joined us, go check out afrorack.org. And if you are able, give them a donation, send them a little bit of uh, support or a lot of support if you can. Uh, they are trying to bring this fun and educational modular synth thing that we do to groups of people who may be less likely to have access to these things. And this seems like an appropriate time to try to bring awareness to what they're doing. All right, I'm just going to make some space because... Need to be reaching around back there. It sounds like the SynthWorks website might be down. So you might need to go there at another time. This was not uh, a sponsored video or anything. I just bought these because it seemed like a crazy deal and I love arcade buttons. I'm from the arcade game generation, I'd say. One of them, one of a few. And we love our big, chonky buttons. Okay, let's give this back a little bit. Okay, there we go. It's actually in. It's connected to power. And now we have to connect it to something else. Let's also fix the camera while we're at it. Um, Sounds like SynthWorks is down, huh? Okay. Well, instead, go to go to afrorack.org, and okay, let's see. Let's get this going. Configure video, and autofocus. Okay, 
Okay, maybe we'll not autofocus because that autofocus is really bad. Okay, sorry about this. We're almost there. Trying to make this somewhat watchable. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll go with that. Okay, so here we go. There's our Synthworks push button. Thank you, HR and uh, Quantum Space, for uh, donating and, and uh, supporting AfroRack. And anyone else who just joined us, we're bringing awareness to AfroRack.org today. So please go and check out their website and send them a donation if you can. HR mentions Perfect Circuit is donating some of their sale this weekend to AfroRack. So if you need modules, it seems like a great thing to do as well. Or if you need other synth gear. Um, okay, so we have our push button. This is the Synthworks MG1. We literally just got this in the mail today. I've got a few more, but maybe we'll just stick with the one for right now. Um, okay, and if we press this button... sick okay so here here's how it's going to work i suppose we need to send a signal into this input and then that signal will automatically be routed according to the panel artwork here which has the the classic imagery of a switch right this is the schematic imagery of a switch where normally when the button is not being pushed, when it's up, as it lists here, the signal passed to the input will come out of this output. And when we push this button, it will switch to this output. So we can send a positive voltage there, right? We could send a, uh, let's say, a DC offset. And I'm gonna take one from, this isn't this isn't the pro use of the bends by Warmstar, but it's a use of the bends by Warmstar Electronics out of Austin, Texas. Check out Bradford's work; he does great stuff. So I'm going to take one of the outputs from that module, and I'm going to send it into the input. And notice that the the light went dim, and I think that's because the DC offset is low currently. This module is kind of dancing around in here. Okay, there we go. I'm good. If we turn up that DC offset, the, the voltage level of that DC offset, I think that light's going to go up. Super useful indicator, right? I believe this is just positive 12 volt, 0 to 12, because it, this might be most sensibly used for gates or the getting the effect of a gate, right? Um, so we'll send this, we'll set this to something high. And we'll take another cable. And we'll come out of the output of this. I'm gonna send this over here to our, let's see. We'll just gate a VCA for the time being. And into that VCA, I'll route our old friend plates. Okay, let's see if this works. I think we can hear that, right? VCA normally at zero, and when we press that push button, the signal is routed, that positive voltage, right? I believe it's uh, 10 volts. We have to look on the, on the scope over here. Yeah, looks like uh, 10 volts. Double check. Okay, yeah. So we're sending we're sending a DC offset of ten volts, 
In fact, it looks like, even without anything patched in, this thing has a plus 12 volt DC offset. So without anything patched to the input, this is already prepared for us to plug in the output, the down output, and Okay, so we're going from zero to 12 volts, super fast. And if we want to confirm that, oh boy, let's mute that. If we want to confirm that, we'll plug that into the data over here. This might be slightly out of focus, but when I press this going into the data, almost looks more like 10 volts actually. Going from zero, boop, up there to 10 volts, and then back down. And notice we can very, very briefly see that there's like an edge to that front end and then the back end. If I press it a bunch, we'll see it looks kind of like a square wave. Look at that, looks like a gate. If I hold it down, it stays high. When I release it, it goes low. Are we seeing some usefulness for this yet? I think uh, opening up a gate uh, or opening up a VCA with a gate is very brutal, right? What do we use in between those signals, between a gate and our VCA? An envelope, right? So maybe we could route this into an envelope control and smooth out some of that really abrasive, sudden change. And give ourselves a little bit of a flavor on this envelope. Let's unmute the channel. trigger mode so it didn't wasn't sustaining what's up ed okay so i've dialed in an attack decay sustain release envelope that should now respond to the gate so when i hold this down it should start the envelope we heard the attack the decay and now we're sustaining and now when i release the button i don't know what we're looking at on camera here let's move back over here where it makes sense um, okay. Ed, Dual Tricks, thanks for joining us. We are looking at the MG1 from Synthworks, which is currently on sale, apparently, for $25 a piece. This is kind of a no frill sale in terms of uh, what you get in the box in that sense it doesn't come in a box it comes in uh wrapped in you know bubble wrap the power cable is connected to the back already uh no screws or or, or anything like that it's just the module and uh, 25 bucks a piece you can email synthworks uh go to their website synthworks.com works has an e not an o and apparently the website is currently down, so we might uh, check back with that later. But this is simply a manual gate, right? A manual gate, but with an arcade button. So a little bit more fun, perhaps, to play. Now, what else could we use a gate for? Right now, uh, we've just connected it directly to a VCA for a very brutal on and off effect, right? Whenever we play the, the or push down this button, the module itself is sending an internal plus 10 volt direct current out, 
constantly out of the out, up output, and when we press the button down, it sends it out of the down output. So we can use it as a gate. And now we're using it as a gate to control an envelope, which is controlling our VCA, right? Of course, what envelope you connect it to is maybe important. And that might get kind of boring because it's certainly not going to control the pitch. But we can control the pitch with something else. For instance, what if I control the pitch of our oscillator with a sequencer? Just generate a random pattern on the sequencer. And we clock the sequencer from this same output. So whenever we press the button, the sequencer advances one step as well as turning on that envelope, right? It will it'll turn on the envelope, open up the signal, we'll hear some, some signal. It will also instigate the sequencer to change the pitch on the oscillator as soon as we play that note. So we'll get some uh, 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 multiple change from one button push. And conveniently, this has a multiple built in at the top of the module. So we can just take that, it's a passive mult, I believe. So we can just take that out We'll route the down, let's get this red cable out of the way, the down out into the malts in, and then out of the malt to our, uh, our envelope, and we'll take one other signal, and we'll route that to clock our sequencer. So now for every button push, we should get the sequencer advancing a step, and then we should get the, at the same time, the envelope should turn on and open up and let us hear that newly changed pitch on the oscillator. That's a good question. I don't know if it's buffered. I assumed it was passive. If it's buffered, it's even an even greater value, I would say. Um, it's uh, it's already just a, kind of a ridiculous deal at 25 bucks. Uh, they do have another module on sale right now, as I mentioned earlier, that is a slider. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just trying to hook you guys up with good deals as I find them. Um, let's see. Hey, CVL, it's VCL, but that's okay. If you add in the chain, a slider CV will be cool. That's actually like the other module that they're selling. I don't have that, but um, I think what you're saying is maybe a changing voltage would be interesting as well. And we'll maybe get to that in a second. We're kind of getting that now because we're triggering the, a sequencer. <laughs> Let's maybe shorten the length of this pattern. That way we'll hear kind of the, the, the actual sequencing. Can you hear the chunk of that button? It, it feels chunky. You can feel it when it clicks. Okay, this is fun. Um, of course, uh, the, the 
oscillator I'm using is plates or the uh, a mini version of plates. So we could even just use the built-in trigger, no VCA. <laughs> And I'm right now using the uh, the voltage block as my sequencer, so maybe we'll also put it into a scale. I think that's the major scale. Okay, so I think uh, JVF's idea here of why are we just sending a boring old, you know, clunky gate when, as a, min a minute ago, we saw we can send a, a changing signal. We could change that signal using, um, I think I need to screw on maybe these these nuts a little bit. That might be another... Yeah, some of these nuts need a little screwing on. Nice chunky uh, uh, input jacks, though. I really like the, the, the feel of the input jacks. They kind of remind me of the... Who's the what's it? The Z3000, which was my first oscillator. And... I love that oscillator and the inputs all have the same kind of uh, uh, the same type of signal or, you know, the eighth inch connector. And yeah, I think I need to do a little tightening of those things. You know, this is again, kind of the as does character of $25 module, but uh, I'm fine with that. I can deal with it. Okay. Um, Let's take this signal, which, as we saw, when we turn up and down a direct current, right, this is a, a 0 to plus 12 signal, I believe, and, uh, uh, or plus 10. The input can take plus 12, but I'm sending a direct current that goes from 0 to plus 10. So um, we're going to take that output, and maybe instead of going into the trigger input on plates, we could go into the level input, or we could go into the the level input on our on our uh, uh, what should I call it over here? Our VCA. There we go. So as we turn up, as we press the button and turn up the direct current. Oh, let's also unmute the channel. That would help. So I'm just turning up and down that direct current. So we can see the indicator on the panel also shows us that current signal level with the brightness of the LED. You know, while we're talking about uh, awareness and uh, uh, understanding perspectives that maybe aren't our daily experience. I've recently uh, uh, read a comment on one of the videos talking about how indicator LEDs are not helpful for our, our uh, sight-impaired colleagues. Right? The The LEDs on the panel are maybe, if, if that's our sole way of knowing what's coming out of the instrument or what's happening within the instrument, might not be so helpful for our, uh, uh, our blind friends, our friends who can't see what those panel indicators mean. Colored indicators that change color to show us what's happening depending on the color of that indicator. These are things that, uh, uh, you know, some of us don't, probably most of us don't think about in terms of module design, interface design, 
uh, these types of things. So, uh, but I find that to be a, a useful addition. Uh, yes, we're sending a uh, telegram here. Um, okay, speaking of causes, again, we're trying to raise awareness today for Afro-Rack. So if you've just logged in with us, um, go check out afrorack.org and make a donation if you can. And help us support this great organization as I tighten the screws on this module panel. Okay, we'll worry about that later. What else can we do with this thing? Well, why just send a direct current to the input? Why not send a fluctuating current to that input? JVF mentions the 16N fader bank. Really cool device. I absolutely want one of those. I have a 16 fader MIDI controller made by Dopefer that I got probably 20 years ago that I love. And um, I wish it sent CV now. But that 16N is kind of the same thing with super useful set of 16 direct current controllers that can be uh, separate from your rack. I believe there's a rack mountable version, but okay. So let's take the output of this signal and let's send it somewhere else. Let's try, uh, or rather let's send something, some other signal into it. Um, what's a module that sends a positive zero to positive voltage fluctuating or looping signal. How about maths? Why don't we take the output of a channel on maths, a looping cycling channel on maths, and we'll send that to the input. And look at that, we have a brightness indicator showing us the CV intensity coming out of that, or coming into that signal, right? And in fact, again, if we patch if we patch out of the up output, we have that signal just passed right along through the device, right? Out of the out output, or sorry, the down output, we get nothing until we push our button. What if we replace that from the CV with a VCA? How about we plug something into the VCA? We take both that signal in addition to pitch. Yeah, I gotta plug that one in more still. Uh, and we'll just take that LFO and we'll malt it. We could even send that out to uh, to re-trigger the maths so that when we hit the button, it restarts the maths LFO. Uh, yeah, we're out of here. Without that, the onset changes every time I play it.
get a little bit more repeatable that way. Um, so, all right, now we've got this thing kind of working. What about if we also took the up output and had that controlling a different channel's VCA? and had an oscillator going to that VCA. So we get this kind of inverse relationship between channels if we use it to control separate VCAs, uh, or rather if we use the up and the down outputs separately, we get this kind of uh, uh, inverse back and forth relationship. Um, let's see. Of course, we could just send this out directly to trigger some drum modules or something like that. Getting messy here. What if we send this over to the Basimilis? Unmute the channel. Unplug the VCA. nice useful device what about what if we took this thing send this through there what happens then let's try it out okay i'm going to take the output let's see if we can put it next to something that's going to generate some signal Maybe we need to run that into the microphone first, and then the microphone down into that. That'd probably be better. There it goes. Right, what if we took that now and sent that out? Just, that's actually triggering the uh, uh, the basimilis, kind of like re-triggering it constantly. Now we've routed it directly in, and we're just kind of. Gating it in. Um, let's see. Yep, anything gate related, anything that you don't mind hand operating in that sense. Uh, let's see. Using it with Eloquencer to record drums and have a separate switcher and use the same module for different parts. That would be cool. You could use like a uh, sequential switch or maybe not a sequential switch, but like, a, you know, an actual switch. Um, switch between destinations or really sources, I suppose, at that point. And um, 
you know, kind of go between your patterns and live performed pieces. Um, this is something we could also route into Tempe to set the tempo of uh, our clock module. Um, I like the idea of being able to hand clock a sequencer. So I kind of dig that side of it too. And um, yeah. And again, it doesn't have to be a gate, right? We just sent in an audio signal. Of course, it's only going to come out, um, I suppose, unipolar. Let's let's look at that. Actually, what if we route? Let's try putting this back next to a. Okay, so let's move this thing over here for a second. Okay, here's the data showing the signal coming out of the electro, the electro uh, uh, magnetic microphone. That's coming through microphony, unclipped. Right, we can turn the microphony input way up. We can turn the the microphone input way more, uh, a, a lot more up. But Bipolar signal, right? Up and down around that zero point. Now, let's look at it through this thing. Through the, if I can find a long enough cable. No. There we go. Coming out of that output. Oh, look at that. It's a bipolar signal. What about out of the other output? So it's really plus minus 12 volts, which is really cool. That means that we can send an audio signal through here. That means we can send an LFO through here, not just a, a unipolar LFO that we are getting out of maths, but we could take a, uh, a normal LFO. Let's grab a bipolar LFO. We could just use, uh, let's use our nice, chonky LFOs from the seven or from the Z3000, excuse me, send that in here. You, uh, you can't see because the camera isn't on that right now, but the, let's get that thing out of there. Okay, there's our LFO plus minus five volts so that's coming through our ms or mg1 excuse me the the push button control um ed says one hand should at least control three parameters i think uh i think that's why we have the malt built into this, right? Bring this back over here. There's a malt at the very top of this module, and that's kind of what this is for, right? We might not want all those things to do the same modulation, those three controls that we're trying to modulate with one hand, but we can take two outputs from here, malt them, send them to other malts, send them to attenuators, things like this, and change what those signals are going to do. But I really like the idea that we can send a bipolar signal, a fluctuating signal, including an LFO, not just a, a held voltage, right? This takes this out of the range of just a gated device. And it means that now this LFO can be used for other things. And this signal con control can be used for other things like, uh, let's see, where's that going right now?
getting some amplitude modulation. And I don't know if it's the VCA topping out at 4,000 hertz where it just can't tell anymore or if it's the if it's the push button module we could probably check that by just listening to the output of this Okay, so it's not the synth works. That lets us go full spectrum, including super low frequencies. So I think it's that the veils can only go up to 4,000 uh, or so hertz before it starts to uh, lose track of the, the VCA. Maybe we just need to increase the amplitude. Okay, that's just audio rate modulation of our VCA CV input, right? If we slow that way down and just do LFO modulation of it. That's the tone, right? That's the tone that we're speeding way up. We're speeding way up the volume manipulation, right? The tone stays the same until we reach a certain point, and then all of a sudden the tone is affected by the rate of volume change. So that's kind of cool. Um, this thing can get some, can send audio rate signals through it, no problem. Just acts as an on off. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, I think, you know, it's one o'clock. We've kind of done an hour here. So let's just uh, wrap it up. Let's talk about uh, what we've been doing here. This is the, whoops, and there goes my, there goes my mic stand. Hello. Okay, well, my headphones, there we go, there we go. Okay, so um, we have been looking at the Synthworks MG1 arcade button operated signal switch right excuse the crunching in the background I'm just tightening my microphone back down um really cool device i have to say uh these are 25 dollars right now on the synthworks um website you might have to actually directly email synthworks to get that deal uh, i think they normally sell for 90 bucks but 25 bucks with maybe uh, a little bit of um you know no frills, um, no uh, um, screws, maybe, you know, a little bit in need of some some cleanup or something like that. 25 bucks, though, come on. I got four of them. I couldn't resist. So um, check out Synthworks. And as well, we're here in a historic time, as I mentioned earlier, and we're trying to raise awareness for some of our friends in the uh, um, African-American community, the underserved who need access to instruments and the devices and tools that we're lucky enough to, to have access to and talk about every week. So 
uh, I would encourage you all to go over to afrorack.org. Afrorack is located in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. And they are providing uh, STEM-based educational programs and access to modular synthesizers and music technology to African-American youth and underserved communities. So I would just encourage you all to go over to the AfroRack.org website if you can donate. If, uh, if you can't donate, please share their cause. And um, I know they would take module donations too. So if you have devices or gear that you're willing to part with that you think could go to better use, then that I think would be a great way to to work with them. But I think that's where we're going to wrap it up today. This is Voltage Control Lab, Mod City Live, um, voltagecontrollab.com, at Voltage Control Lab on Instagram, at V Control Lab on Twitter. And we'll be back here next week. Okay, let's production saw Mr. Afro rack discussion. I think he's about to find out because we're a few seconds ahead on this side. So <laughs> uh, head over to AfroRack.org, support the cause. I think they're doing really great things and they deserve our support. And um, I really appreciate your guys coming in here, hanging out with us, being so, so kind as to go over there and donate. I know a number of you already did and uh, I really appreciate that. And I know, I know they will. So have a great weekend. Keep up the cause. Keep making some weird sounds. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care.